Five color late game decks are going to be more prominent in the sealed. Yeah. Seal, I mean, yeah, exactly. I agree, Pizza. Like, I'm probably going to try to do a focused aggro deck to take advantage of that. But I, I agree with you. All right, we got Frolicking, Hooped Up. Just take Frolicking here. Probably. We could take the uh, Apprentice's Folly. I was I got that. My, my first trophy had Apprentice's Folly, but I do think it's a bit of a meme now that people have gotten a little bit higher up on the bargain cards. Yeah, is it Saga Live a Little? Never. You know who I am? I could have taken the Hamlet Glutton, honestly. That's what Squealer would have taken. Don't let your memes be dreams. You know, after after the arena open, after the arena open, we'll loosen up a little bit. Right, but right now we're going for blood. And like, there was like there was a fair amount in that pack that were like acceptable. You know, they were okay. Okay, scalding viper. Wow, and we passed the blue red rare. A lot of blue red cards coming in at the beginning here. Could take the Royal Treatment as well. I don't mind. I mean, this is a pretty good performing green uncommon. But let's see where Blue Red's taking us these days. We got the Otter and we got the Viper. They're kind of like taking two gold cards early, though. That's the one downside, right? A match made in heaven for sure. Totentons, just keep taking the gold cards into the fake court. See, this is probably the best card. And then if we're looking specifically at blue red, I think it would be into the fake court. Yeah, I mean, I'm not we're not sold on being blue red yet. It's not like we need to force blue red. But if Totentons wasn't here, I think I would lean towards the fake court. But let's take uh, Totentons. Just start off with three gold cards. What could possibly go wrong? All right. Hearth Elemental's good, especially in blue red. I think blue red's its best archetype. Any archetype where you can like get your hand empty, which can be awkward if you have into the fake court. But let's uh, let's let's play the hearth hearthy boy. Okay, what do we get? Garbage, garbage. Obira. I want Obira to be better. Um, Johan's stopgap. Transmuter, and maybe it would take the hopeful vigil, and just stay open. I don't think there's any reason to commit, and I've really liked Hopeful Vigil. It's just kind of awkward, like, because blue white's so bad. But if we end up pivoting into Boros, for example, I'll be happy to have it. Okay, now, now what? You're chill, no thank you. I know DeFour is really high on this Aquatic Alchemist, treating it sort of like a uh, Party Crasher. Just like, if you can make it a 3-3 every turn, then it's quite a bit better. But I guess I'll just take the, the red 2-drop here. Okay. Hmm. Shrouded Shepherd. Nine Crescendo, Merry Bards. We've got some decent red-white... Like, uh, this is good in Boros. This is okay in Boros. It's not great. This has been pretty good as long as you're going wide with rats. So I think I'll just take the white card, though. Seems fine. I think my second pick would be Gnawing, and then my third would be Merry Bards. Since these, I think, I, I haven't felt like I had to go out of my way to get the Merry Bards. hmm. <laughs> Knight of Doves has not been terribly good. There's the Curiosity, which we could do if we wanted to uh, do the Catapults. 
kind of a fun time. Stop gap again. If we wanted to lean towards blue red, uh, I think I might just take the minstrosity though, in case we end up in black red. Yeah, of course, Sam Black is big on the adventure side of the squid. It's how you loop infinitely, right? <laughs> Which is like Sam Black's like mo. All right, we got Mary Bards here. Whisper. I don't know. I've come up a little bit on Diminisher Witch. Definitely think we could. This still looks like it's like blue red is definitely an option, but I like Mary Bards more in Boros. And we have a really late Archon's Glory, so there's a chance that Boros is actually open. And like we could fit what a thousand stop gaps. Stop gap seems to go pretty late. Eventually, this Archon's Glory is going to stop going to like pick eight, but for the time being, it's fantastic. Into the Fake Court wield armory mice. I still don't know if we're blue red or for red white. I this is better in blue red than this is in red white. The armory mice has honestly, I felt like, been a bit of a trap, so I'm going to take the uh, Into the Fake Court. And we've got Vault Progress on the Fog that nobody ever wants to play. Or we could take the Alchemist. We might end up in blue-red. Alchemist is okay. Oh man, really, the decision right here, right? Stop Gap or Return Triumphant. I don't know. All right, that one I can feel confident to put in the sideboard. Doing well, Spaceman. All right, likeness loot. We've got... <laughs> hmm. <laughs> what if we did blue reds? What if we did Jeskai? What if we could do blue red splash white? I think this card might be good enough to splash. Uh, we got Totentons here. But we didn't really pick up enough black to say that we're black red. And I'm not sure we want to splash Totentons. Uh, uh, uh. Well, we always take the fire emancipation for vault progress. I'm going to take this in, just in the off chance that black opens up, right? Because I've really loved the I, I have loved Rakdos, but I doubt we're going to pivot there. But also take that for the splash. It's fine. Everything is fine here. All right. All right. So this, you know, this is why we stay open, right? This is three votes for black. White also has only three votes. Blue has five. I saw your message in the Discord, Spaceman. Good luck with the uh, mom quick draft. May you open up Chrome House Seed Shark and Preening Champion. Could take the end, too. <laughs> Candy Grapple's just better than the end, though. All right, well, let's see. We don't know where, we're, where we are yet. Okay. Doesn't look like a bad black red start. The Mary Bards is a little bit filler. All right. Very Dream Thief. Love this in the Rakdos deck. Very aggressive card. Just start pinging them for one damage and then it draws later. Instrosity. Got the uh, cut in. Cut-in I'd probably take over, uh, if the Fairy Dream Thief wasn't here, I think my second pick is Cut-in, and then Minstrosity for just as many two-drops as humanly possible. <laughs> the little hatching plans. 
he threw the hatching plan secret to the world. All right, let's just take the dream thief. Maybe pass some packs so that the uh, server isn't just going insane. All right, gracious vermin's great. Going wide with rats. Okay, so now we've got a choice between edge wall pact and monstrosity. We could use a little bit more top end, but if we end up just like two drop dot deck, I don't think that that's bad. Let's see, I think I saw less black than I did red, so. I'm going to take the Minstrosity over Edgewall Pack again. It's a choice. Twisted Fealty in case we get some Callous Cell Swords. I might even try it without, right? I think at least like one copy of Twisted Fealties felt okay. Has anybody tried running two? We don't have very much. Are we all? We have. We have. We're all creatures in one interaction right now. Okay. So that's two interaction. Legerant of the ball. It's okay. We've got Scream Puff and Sugar Rush, which both of those I'm not particularly interested in playing. Mary Bards is a three drop, or Baro Naughty is a two drop. I think I'm fine with the Baro Naughty. Sweet Tooth Witch Wield, that's nice. There's also Not Dead After All, but let's see. It could be kind of fun. I think of this more as a Golgari card, where you have like food synergies, but like I guess you could do it on Minstrosity as well. But if the witch wasn't there, we, we could play one not dead. All right, let's hope we don't have to play that. Vault progress over the ice out? Sure. Okay. Pack two. Ability to splash white. Interesting. Gracious Berman might just be the pick. Boundary Lands Ranger. I'd rather run Boundary Lands Ranger than the Borrow Naughties. But we could go with another. We could go with another three drop. I really want some of those Twisted Sewer Witches. That would be nice. But yeah, I think I'll take the Vermin here. A little bit more interaction would be nice. Like, three more pieces of interaction at the very least. Raid Bombardment. Every time I see this, I always get excited. I'm always like, yeah. Oh. All right. How about zero interaction Rakdos? Rakdos, known for its removal. Let's play it with no removal. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, all right. All right, now we're definitely on a uh, 15 land plan. If the only top deck there, if the only four cost of an above card is Hearth Elemental, we're definitely going to be cutting some lands. <laughs> Zero interaction. It's clear that the meta has shifted indeed. Oh, fairy fencing. I want this to be good. We do need some removal, right? Uh... Prick. All right, let's speculate on whether or not we play the Spectre. I don't think we do, but well, I'm passing like a Borrow Naughty and a Fairy Fencing. I'd rather not run Fairy Fencing. 
but oh, candy grapple. Ooh, and rat out. Ooh, man, that's close. And Rakdos. Radout's probably closer to Candy Grapple than it is in any other archetype. I still think Candy Grapple wins out. And then we've got a decent two drop here. But yeah, we got a Operation Candy Grapple is a go. Which is Mark could be a good one of for refueling, and we definitely have the room in our curve for it. We only have three spells so far. You can't ever imagine doing it? Maybe... Have you played a lot of Rakdos, though? Have you played a lot of just two-color Rakdos? There is something about the one-cost removal build a rat that then has rat synergies. I think it's it's closer than you might, might be giving it credit for in Rakdos, but maybe I'm also just way too high on it. Edgewall Pact versus Gnawing Crescendo. I think Gnawing Crescendo might be right, but I'm going to gamble maybe we get one of these later. Oh, that's tough, man. That is tough. Because, like... That's definitely a, a potential win condition. Okay, Shatter. Probably cut the top end out a little bit, though. But, like, uh, we, we might need it. Alright. Not dead after alls. Probably got enough synergies in our deck. We'll have to take a look. Dun, dun, dun. Merry Bards versus Minecart Devil. Daredevil. Drop Combat Trick versus just Young Hero Roll. Young Hero Roll is really nice with rats. Warehouse Tabby probably doesn't make the cut. So we could just take Vault Progress. Grim Search, Spell Stutter, Slide of Hand, and Dark Tutelage. I don't want to play any. I, we're not playing this. I haven't drafted four copies of this yet. Wow, so everything but green fell open. <laughs> they definitely could have been blue-red. Hey, Thomas Worf. You find yourself saving 10,000 coins before a draft to go 0-3 or 1-3? Well, I would recommend doing Quick Draft, then. Alright, uh... Here, one, one second. Let me... Let me get this... Where did I put it? Okay. Here's a formula that will help dramatically for a lot of the do's and don'ts. Okay. Try to get this as close as possible. I think this will help you a lot. 15 creatures, plus or minus one, right? Five removal, at least, right? More removal is okay, less removal, not okay. Three utility being in you know enchantments spells instances that are not removal um examples of utility spells would be like not dead after all or which is mark and then try to get your most of your drafts are going to be a mid-range deck there are exceptions where you're going to have a lot more twos and a lot more of like early end and a lot less up here but for the majority of your drafts you're going to be in a mid-range deck which is generally somewhere around seven four cost or more cards and then at least six two drops and if you're if you're obeying those rules that's my like that's my beginner's checklist for draft if you're obeying those rules 
and not making punts. If you're not making mistakes when you're playing, like playing your instances on your turn instead of during combat or whatever, right? Um, that should help your win rate. And if you're new to draft and you're in bronze, you should be able to get at least three wins. So I hope that helps, Thomas. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm, I'm happy to review drafts. If you uh, join my Discord and post, uh, like, t uh, install a tracker, either untapped or 17 lands, and post the um, draft, and I'll be happy to review it for you. Mid-range, uh, um, it's complicated, right? Um, so aggro is basically trying to end the game by turn five or six. Mid-range is trying to end the game by seven or eight. And then control is trying to win the game by like nine plus turns. And you need to have a ton of removal and control is the hardest one to actually pull off. Um, because you need to know what, what resources to spend where and when, so you really need to have a good grasp on the set before you try to do something like control. But they're all possible. And generally, early on in the set, um, aggro is preferred because people don't know the good cards to defend against aggro. And if you're spending a lot of time, like, dirtling around, then you don't, um, <laughs> you, you get run over by aggro. So, like, right now, the early front runners are Rakdos and Boros, which are the fastest two in the set. I think Golgari looks really good, though, but Golgari is more of an example of what you would do for a mid-range deck. And I highly recommend checking out my YouTube um, I, I have a weekly series called No Rares Required, which goes over the majority of commons and uncommons for a specific archetype. And if you look at my draft skeletons uh, and compare the one that I posted for Boros and the one that I posted for Golgari, Golgari is more of a mid-range curve and will fit closer to the formula that I just gave you. Whereas Boros is more like Rakdos, like the one I'm in right now. Um, sorry, and I say the name so quickly. Boros being red-white, Rakdos being black-red. Um, but Rakdos and Boros are, are more of an aggressive start where you're going to be a little bit more towards an early game curve. Yeah, and, and Golgari is a natural answer to the aggression of Rakdos and Boros because the food gets you life and you can stabilize, right? So one of the things that you're looking for in mid-range is big threats that, like, Rakdos has some pretty good removal but like right now this is my only answer to hamlet glutton right like if they play a 6-6 the only thing i can do is shatter the oath right or um mind control it and take it over but that's kind of the the ebb and flow right and then mid-range threat mid-range decks tend to do the worst against control because control can wait to just take out the the top end of the mid-range threats, and then usually mid-range doesn't have enough to close out the game. So there's kind of like a rock, paper, scissors, where, like, yeah. So, like, aggro sets the pace, mid-range beats the aggro, and then control beats mid-range. And a really good control deck will beat aggro and mid-range, um, but is the most difficult to put together. And uh, the rules are a little bit different in limited than they are in constructed. There's more of like a an actual rock, paper, scissors in constructed. Um, but yeah, I hope that helps. Anyway, so back to this deck. We've got three cuts to make. That's one thing when you're when you're drafting. Make sure to get your deck down to 40 cards uh, because it improves the chances of you finding your best cards. And uh, let's see here. So what do we we um I think we just lean this way yeah that was like my 10 second master class right <laughs> but thank you for the follow all right so Generally, you're going to want to run 17 lands for that mid-range curve. My rule for beginners, there are always, are, always are exceptions, right? But generally, if you have four or more or four drops, you don't want to run less than 17 lands because it decreases your chances of hitting land four by turn four. So I'm willing to take that risk because I only have one four drop. 
So with a curve that's this low, with a 2.5, we could run as low as 15 lands. I don't think I have anything in particularly that I'm just like dying to run that is below four um, to throw in over a land. So I'll probably just do an 8-8 eight, eight split, call it good with 16, and expect that we're going to be a little bit heavy on lands. But um, let's see. Best card in here is probably the Dream Thief or might be Twisted Fealty. Honestly, this this the win rate, especially in, in Rakdos aggro, has been insanely high for this. So let's give this a shot. All right, here we go. We got three lands we could... All right, so kind of plan out your plays however you'd like. That was, this is why rat out so nice, right? This triggers celebration, so we'll be able to attack with a three three. Racing the three one is a little bit sketch, but not terrible. I think I will go with the grand ball guest over the borrow naughty. And yeah, Thomas, you're, yeah, there are there are 100 percent. There are archetypes that are better than others. Like right now, blue white is absolute garbage. Blue white is not looking good. Protective parents, will they trade their protective parents? Oh, young hero roll on armory mice, I thought would have been easily a, a thing that they wanted to do. Oh yeah, and the format is still early for sure. Dude, are we just racing this? Kind of want to just candy grapple the armory mice. And go for the removal? Dude, okay, so then, and then moments like this, right? Like... Do you block against green white? Yeah, but no. Dang. Really needed a land there. Not hitting a land is bad for us, so we're pushing. We're pushing for three. Block the protective parents. The savior is going to get out of reach, though. We do have some food. I think I go for the two spell because we missed the land and still hold out on the candy grapple, but this is not looking great. Aha! Land! Okay. They had the play, which means they go first, which is an advantage in Magic the Gathering. Because right now, the race is in their favor. Looped up, so I can't block with the 2-2. Two -two. Root Wider Fawn to trigger... Oof. Okay, so if we take this, we go to 3 HP. They have two blockers. I probably should have traded the witch. Because now I feel like we're on the defensive foot here. I chump with the dream thief. I don't want to. I think I'm just going to take the th take it. Rakdos really doesn't want to be blocking. This gets lifelink. Okay. 
Not dead yet. Just very, very close to dead. You find you guys I found that I find this set to be more fun. Oh no, Princess takes flight, okay. Do they also have combat tricks? Let's find out. So if they have a combat trick, I'm just dead, right? I could pop food and go to two, or I could do the candy grapple. Saviors, whenever an enchantment goes into the graveyard. I could block the armory mice. I'm dead either way to Archons, aren't I? Food or candy grapple? Alright. Young hero roll, plus three, plus three. Gonna have to block with the dream thief and hope that they don't have removal. No, well, Jawari, the, the roll on Thief doesn't make a whole lot of sense if I'm going to have to chump block Thief when it comes at me for plus two, plus two. And it's going to come back with a wicked roll attached to it anyway. I'm going to hope that they don't have anything else. I'm going to go with the Merry Bards, pay for the Young Hero roll on it. Chump lock with the Dream Thief, use the Not Dead after all, and then pop food. Because I really want to keep the Dream Thief alive. Could also play the Mer Merry Bards, skip the young, roll, the young Hero roll entirely. This is dead to a single thing of removal, which is sketch. But you gotta gamble sometimes. Please don't have the werewolf, ferocious werewolf trick. And then I get my life linker back and then we stabilize. Please? Uh, I don't want the f I don't want a mountain, that's for sure. Oh, ha, ha, they don't get the life linker back. Okay. Ooh, and spellbook vendor. Garbage. Okay. This, we can just pop food. So this can choose itself or here. So we either have a 3-3 three, three or 2-4. But I think we have to start attacking them to have any chance of winning this. Bardcore, yeah. Um, do we leave this back to block? They're going to have a 3-3. Three, three. We can block the 1-3 if they pump here, though. So it's guaranteed to be able to block, or we could just block with the Voracious. 
All right, let's go with let's go with this. It's aggressive. just pop the food now before shenanigans whatever I probably should hold on that onto that but I'm always I always get nervous man I always get nervous all right so we've got one blocker they've got four damage coming at us so if they have removal for for voracious vermin we're not dead Can we pull the victory here? It's close. It is close. A oh, spellbook vendor has vi vigilance too. So they should pump with spellbook vendor on itself. Attack with the 1 3 and the 3 3, because then I just don't have good blocks. But then they need to be able to place what's their last card? Last card's a creature gives them two blocks and they take three damage and they're not dead. It's close. Okay, so now we have to block. Now we have two things of vigilance, really unfortunate for us. Three blockers. Okay. Hold. 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 <laughs> yeah, death touch is nice here. So if this gets through and this gets through, that's still only four damage. So we just need one chump blocker for this. I could attack with the Merry Bards. They have to block with something. Then I don't have a blocker for Spellbook Vendor. We just have to live around. All right, let's play this first. Send this. Send this. I have two blockers. That way, if they even have removal, we can still chump block and then we win in the air. They better not top deck the answer. Gulp. Jawari, yeah, untapped is what allows you to hover over the cards and read them. You can also use it as a personal tracker. All right, one life remains. What a game to start things off. Holy cow. What did they top deck? Archon's glory. Archon's glory would do it. Oh wait, why did I not count? This has a he young hero roll on it? Oh no, I miscounted. Okay, well. Please, no, 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 no whammies. No whammies. Booyah, let's go. All right, so Grand Ball Guest. Mary Bards is better on four. We don't really need to play that. So we've got a two, three, two, three, four. Seems OK. We're up against Mythic number 98. Top 100. Should be a fun game. 
Seeing black, though. Be, sure would be nice. The nice thing, though, is we can trigger the, the double celebration here as long as we hit land four by turn four, which we might not because we are on 16 lands. Okay. So, black is just a little bit late. Lepagoon with the raid. How was your stream, man? So I think they have um, candy, you know, candy grapple, some sort of removal. Yeah. That's fine. We'd much rather them remove that than our belligerent. Voracious vermin. Okay. Young Hero rolls better on this, but if I go here, uh, let's see, was that, would that not work? No, because it's toughness. Even if I make this into a 4-3, the Young Hero roll would still make it into a 5-4. I guess it's fine. All right. Coming at you with a 5-4 menace. Flip a goon, you went 1-3 with a bad, a bad Demir Fairies deck. That's a tricky archetype. You need a lot of removal. How many candy grasps did you have? Mary Bards, you've done your duty. Actually, we could give the Mary Bards menace, eh? And it won't trade. Hey, we can pump this twice. Then we've got three damage lifelink in the air. So then we can kind of sit back and grill. Oh, no. And then they're going to fling it at me. With the Kallus sellsword. sellsword. One red. <laughs> hmm. I think they're going to throw this with their last bit of mana anyway, so I think we are safe to block here. Otherwise, I get my 4 4 menace back. Or 4 4. It's not going to have menace. I could block here and block here. This doesn't tap for mana. Okay. It's going to grow this, though. Acceptable, right? Yeah, fling. Ah, yeah, okay. They're not, well, at least they're not going face with it, you know. But that's uh, that's still rough. What's the chance they have more removal? Because I could just go double pump here, hit them for four, put them to three, and then I gain a bunch of life. I'm not getting through with Grand Ball Guest on the ground anyway. Let's try it. Now they have removal for Baronati, and we're in trouble. Otherwise, they're dead. Ah! Oh. 
Preach! Aha! <laughs> All right, this should be lethal. We could roll on this, sure. Bye bye, number 98. Ooh! Twisted Fealty is broken, can confirm. All right, land of the two drops, and we're going first. I think I'm gonna start with the Scalding Viper because it, the more that they play early stuff, the more damage it does. And then probably do the Grand Ball Guest so that on turn four, we can two spell. We need to hit another black mana to execute this plan. We can two spell with Merry Bards, though. Counter spell, spell stutter. Young hero roll on Scalding Viper is going to be tr pretty choice. Nice shadows. That sounds like a great business model. All right, we have options here. Edge wall pack triggers celebration. We don't care about that. So I think Mary Bards is better because then the Scalding Viper with the young hero roll sounds pretty disgusting. They're going to kill. They're going to kill the Scalding Viper. Still, we're going for it, baby. Jimmy Joe, where is your removal? No removal. Evolving Wilds, they will get black, or white, or green. What, what's going to be their splash? I like this, they're taking a lot of damage. Don't like the fact that they're going to have five mana next turn, since this deck has no removal. That's awesome. I like this idea of the too long didn't read. Oh man, they took how much damage did they take from that viper? Enough. Splash and black. Well, they didn't go get black, so they must not have very much black. Transmuter to make it into a one one. That's acceptable. We're stuck on black mana, but still, I think we're just gonna go with the edge wall pack here. I do wish I had picked up a little bit of that um, board pump, the uh, gnawing crescendo. This deck could use a little bit of a, a go wide finisher. It doesn't push the buttons for you? Dang, Shadows. I want my money back. Ah, <laughs> oh, stuck on black. All right, so do we go for the borrow naughty, which pushes one damage a turn, or do we do the sweet tooth witch? Freak him out. Freak him out. Damn it. That's not good. All right, they have they have stabilized. Three, four doesn't push well. This is better. I think I am actually going to play the the fairy out. Damn. 
Oh, that Witch Stalker Frenzy really took the air out of my sails. That menace was key for me to closing out the game. Oh, and then also this has reach. Ooh. Plans to redraw their hand. A. Okay. okay. That gets a round reach. That triggers celebration. Okay, we have a new strategy. Belligerent to Minstrosity. Trigger celebration. M for two. Let's go. Yeah, I'm all for promotion, but like, don't do it in my stream. Do it in my Discord. Post the link in the uh, the self promo in the Discord. Oh, 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 yeah. Well, same thing. Post it in the Discord so that I can actually have a chance to look at it. <laughs> um. All right. So we go here. Trigger celebration. Pump here. What are they doing? Oh, they're drawing. It's a land or a what? An artifact? Okay. That's an enchantment, not an artifact. They're basically at 3 HP. Three HP, I have they have four blockers, I have five attackers. I can pump the Baro Naughty and trade for the Grabby Giant. Or we can try to hit removal for the Grabby Giant and then kill them that way. Twisted Fealty would do it. Candy Grapple would do it. Probably don't trade. We're not under any pressure yet, but once they start drawing cards off of hatching plans, we're kind of in trouble. We could put them to 2 HP. Ooh, and then Mon Minstrosity. Mm, it's close. And then the longer we wait, the more they sack with Grabby Giant, so... You know, like, I don't like that grim search. We do have Witch's Mark in here, though. We just need, uh, we need something that triggers Celebrate for Belligerent of the Ball. That would be really close to lethal. It would be lethal at least in two turns, right? We need a land to be able to go pump, pump, and here. Close. My rat! <laughs> no! They haven't found a bargain yet for hatching plans, so at least there's that. Aww. Oh, that's not fair. I. That's my card. I have one of those. All right, so they've gone through a ton of their decks, so maybe they screw up. Oh, no attacks, huh? We wait. We wait for them to have the answers to everything. They're, they, oh, maybe I should have... Ah, man, I was so close, because when Minstrosity gives us a food, Witch can ping for two... 
That's not good. They have drawn less lands than I have. Well, maybe not. <laughs> On top deck hero. Slight of hand, fine. We've got two candy grapples. Candy grapple would do it. Come on, baby. Come on, Jimmy Joe. Let me draw something other than a land. That's not good for us. They draw four. Bounce, borrow, naughty. They're down to 11 cards. Maybe they deck out. <laughs> Twisted Fealty. Come on. Attack me with too much. That's true, pizza. That is very true. <laughs> of course we get the candy grapple after they bounce the Baro Naughty. What are the chances this survives long enough to get an attack in? Have an answer to borrow naughty, please. Hey, definitely going for the aggressive play. We're not dead yet. But of those five cards, do they have an answer for Baronati? Probably. Come on. I think they I think it just took a little bit too long to get them. Though I should keep a one land in hand for Witch's Mark, otherwise I don't have anything to discard to it. Get a flick of coin back. Okay. That seems good to me. Of all the things I could get back. Down to three. Down to three mana. They have lethal on board if they swing all? No. We got 15 damage if we kill the, the grabby giant. They don't have any fairies. So they'd have to ice out us. No! F. They had the answers. They found the technology. They have nine cards left in their deck. Oh, come on, attack me with more than that. You know you want to. Is that it? All 
All right, so look, here's the deal. They have four blockers. We can remove one of those blockers, and then if we also get the mind control, then we can attack them with enough for lethal. So we're going to top deck Twisted Fealty. It's going to be great. We don't need to bargain. I don't think there's any bargain payoffs that we need to hold on to. So there's no reason to not just pop the food here. Seems fine. Oh, whoops. Time out. My bad. Jimmy Joe, my bad. All right. It's dead here. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. Quite get there. Can't quite get there. All right, we got a four three menace, which would trade for their one three <laughs> or their two one. So no dice there. I need them to play a flyer so that we can mind control the flyer. This is a pretty good example of a tempo mid range deck up against an aggro deck, and you can see that the mid range deck is winning the longer the game goes on trying to claw my way back to victory but it ain't looking good hey they gave me a death touch give me a death touch rat let's go why did they do that before drawing <laughs> they're down to seven cards this has been a this has been a bit of a grind for sure What? Going for the attack all? 18 damage coming at me? Whoa. be 9 12 damage we're still dead to monstrous rage I could trade the belligerent of the ball for the 3-3 three, three. that would give it so they wouldn't that wouldn't die to monstrous rage but then we'd only have a rat left that feels wrong block over here well, um, I mean, I could try, I, I assume that they have the answer here. It's why they swung. If it's the plus two plus one trick, then they don't have us, right? Nine, 12, 14. So we wouldn't die from that. Maybe they're just trying to wipe the board and they can just kill the belligerent ball. Otherwise, we have this on the crack back all right 
What you got? Might have been right to block the alchemist and just go off of rats. Q Warlord with the sub. Thank you, Q Warlord. Hmm. All right, so we do lose both. Nice that they did that before Totentons died, though. They should have done that after the first strike damage. Oh no, but then they they don't lose the rat catcher. Um, but I don't get the rat if they if they wait. Show me what you got. <laughs> Frantic Firebolt. <laughs> sure. Oh, you know what? Yeah, we should do this, though. It's a close game. We got him to one. We gave ourselves a long time to find an out. Two drop, two drop, two drop, four drop. Three lands, okay. So we go into the Scalding Viper, okay. This is acceptable. Or we go... Huh. So, Scalding Viper deals more damage to them over time, but since I'm going to play Totentons on 3, I kind of want to set up turn 4 to have the Grand Ball Guest. Alright. I'm going to go with the Grand Ball Guest. Change in tactics. Take down, okay? It's fine. Now we're definitely going here and here before we play the Merry Bards because this gives us two great targets for young hero rolls. What is the wait? Dawn of Hope spotted in the wild. Whenever you gain life, you may pay two if you do draw a card. They did not want to attack. Do I want Totentons to live, or am I fine with a combat trick? I feel like it blocks the 2 1. Let's just leave it alone. Feels a little weird, right? Because, like, we want to be the aggressor. So maybe I should have attacked there with Swarm Piper. Rock and roll Dave. Well, no, rolling Rock Dave, not Rock and Roll Dave. <laughs> nice. A lot of graceful takedowns. Okay. Could have held on to the land. Should have probably held on to land to ditch with Witch's Mark. 
Young hero roll on the rat, though, feels pretty good. See what they got. You got the Archon's Glory to kill the Swarm Piper. Perhaps. Just trade it out. Oh, just trading it outright for the rat. That feels good. And Dream Thief, man, Mary Bards looks really good in Rakdos. You got Minstrosity, you've got all the rats. Why is there a stop? Did I accidentally put a stop? Weird. What could go wrong? What could go wrong? They can create a 1-1. One, one. Okay, so they can trade for Minstrosity. Come on. No board wipe. No whammies, right? There is there is a board wipe in white, right? There's a wrath in white. I haven't bumped into it yet. This is looking okay. Barring an ugly, ugly wrath where we have to rebuild. But even if they wrath us, like, I think we could be sort of okay, because Totentons will make all of them come back as 1-1s, right? So they really, if that is the case, they need to get rid of Totentons. Let's see, so which is Mark here is lethal? Or not quite. So assume they attack the Swarm Piper. Block the 3-2. Oh yeah, 3 damage from the young hero roll from Fairy. And then we put the Wicked Roll from Witch's Mark on the 1-1. One, one. They're just toast. Oh, and I also get another 1-1 one, one after that. Math is for blockers, but I'm pretty sure you're dead. <laughs> ah, see, then, like, just the board goes so wide. That's why that non crescendo would have been nice to have one of. Okay, we're on the draw. Why are we, why are we always on the draw? This is acceptable though. We go guest into Totentans into or, or or witch just to start like bringing the beats. Depends on whether or not it looks like guest is just gonna die. Sweet tooth. Ah, it trades either way. We don't need to celebrate here. I'd rather get a 2-2. Pretty sure. For real, minus. 
I want to know how many times they've given me the draw and if it's more than the play. Gotta get the conspiracy out there. Plane talking, planes walking. Love the name. Black, white, aggro. Yeah, there's the glory. Whoa, they didn't even go for the lifelink and sack the food? Very aggressive. Something's dead here. Andy grapple. Nope. Okay. Interesting. If you want to race, I'm your Huckleberry. Ooh. <laughs> okay, that's a that's a bit of a problem as far as the race goes. Huckleberry down. <laughs> Do we attack? Do you attack here? We don't have any payoffs for going super wide. Everything gets replaced. You get a 1-1 one, one rat versus a 3-2. The witch feels kind of like a bit of a loss because of the food, but I think with the flyer, we might be popping that anyway. And then next turn, we can do Totentons and threaten the Death Touch. Smork! They're probably like, what the hell? <gasps> no! <laughs> oh, oh, destroyed. Cleave shadows bringing the light to where the rats were hiding. Oh, and the ping, they hit us for five. Yeah, that's not good. We're not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> This ops food. Yeah, let's do that. Let's go here. Here. So nothing's going to die yet. I'll just I should have waited to make it more complicated on the opponent. Oh, well. Yeah, that was a lot of rats down. That was a lot of rats down, for sure. Do we save here? Let's see. We go block, block, they take five, we go two. Then I get a bunch of death touch rats. What could possibly go wrong? They have removal for Totentons. That's how it could go wrong. Remove Totentons. Okay. This is making it a 4 4. That's fine. We lose two things, we get two rats. Done. Didn't have the removal for Totentons. That was the big risk, right? Because now there are two HP and I get to attack with two Death Touchers. Yeah, get out of here. Love the name, though. Nothing until turn three. Opponent's got the play. How could this go poorly? There's no way that this goes poorly, right? 
not possible. Nice! Two drop right on time. Let's go. Okay, white, aggressive start. That's casket. Which, I'd rather get the vermin online, because then we can go here. Keep up the not dead after all. Seems okay. Do I play Totentans or do I play the Witch? I think it's Totentans. Definitely want to play the land first, though, so that we can keep the black mana up. That armory mice coming in with some heat. Oh man, are we, are we playing blue white and they're missing? <gasps> they might. Oh my goodness, we might be. Oh baby. I feel the tempo. I feel the heat. Do I accept this trade? No. It's just too good, right? It comes back, it triggers a rat, they're just done. Yeah, I was like... I was even we could just trade Totentons and then we've got a whole bunch of one ones and then it becomes super huge. We play another Totentons. So believers rejoice. We got the five wins. Five wins is uh, enough to make the uh, to make gems. It's technically free. I think it's arguably free at four because you get fourteen hundred of your fifteen hundred back and with the packs and everything. Yeah, four if you've collected the full set. Yeah. Ah, uh, shoot. We're on the draw. We're up against number 724. Do you keep or mole? We have a three drop. I think we mulligan this. I don't think... I mean, we've got two candy grapples, though. If we ever find black, it's great. We've got eight swamps. What say you? What say you? Keep or mole? Pizza's on mole. Shadows is on keep. It's just this is not a turn three play. It's two turn fours. I'm on mole. All right. That's a little bit better. We've got a turn one, turn two. Oh, I want to keep the Twisted Fealty. But. So turn one, turn two, turn three. God, man, this is such a great hand. This just wins you the game, though. Should have probably kept it. Putting down, putting back Totentons feels wrong. Land three, we want land three. You gotta believe. Hey, that's not cool. All right, so since we're not triggering celebration. This gets through the one three blocker better. Oh, yeah, pickle. I'm in team never mole as well for it. Dag nabbit. Hey, what's up, Dirt Nymph? Really hoping Minstrosity would have died 
after it would also have made a rat. Huh. Attacking with the rat, huh? So what is this? Two damage? I mean, I don't think... Maybe it's a bluff? Ooh, not in crescendo. Yeah, baby. Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. Be aggressive. Be, be aggressive. God, they just dumped their entire hand. Dear God, man. We got Candy Grapple online. Repeat, we've got Candy Grapple online. <sighs> I wanted one of those. Our deck would have been amazing if we had a Twisted Sewer Witch. Stupid. Borrow Naughty. Twisted. Candy Grapple the rat? Is the rat not attacking? Yeah, sure. Keep the food for later. It was okay. The disappointed sigh, rat mom. <laughs> nice. Alrighty. The mulligan's starting to kill us. Wait, you didn't want to attack with your rat first and see if I block? Or is it non-token? Yeah, yeah, each creature that died. Bruh. Didn't pump, so they have something in hand. Ah, uh, I think we have got, what? what's our most expensive card? Four? So we're guaranteed to be able to pop this whenever. We got removal right here. Yeah, yeah, Merc, but they, they still played it before attacking here. So if that had died, it would have gotten up. It would have been a 3 3. Which would have blocked my celebrants. Or Grand Ball Guest. Frantic Firebolt. Right. Oh, they were smart and they did it afterwards too, so it didn't trigger the celebration. That's not fair. Is this mythic? Sure. I should have checked if we had something to bargain, but like. Noise. So pump pump is three, four, five, six, seven. So we died of a single thing of removal. Let's go. Let's go, miner. I don't even know why I attacked here. That was a bad attack. I mean, like, what, we're racing them? They're at 11 HP. You're also watching Echo Bravo right now? You traitor! <laughs> no, Tandy's awesome. I was surprised to see Tandy on this early. Nice! Isn't it nice? We're totally dead here. Alright, we don't have red, but... Everything, we're fine. We're just going to surveil the red. Easy. Easy game. Easiest game ever. 
Da, da, da. Reaper versus a 3-1. I think we are... Yeah, Viper. Sorry, I said Reaper. Definitely gonna go with the Viper, because the earlier you get the Viper down, the more damage it does over time. If I get another 6-3, am I gonna stream, uh, like, raid Isaiah? I don't... I mean, Isaiah would have to be online for me to do that, right? But if I... If I always raid Isaiah. Because Isaiah's bay. Let's go. How did it turn into a threat? This is a good question. Like, yeah, that's a good point, right? You chose to grow the voracious vermin and take more damage? Who are you, Optic Draco? Ripped up. Dang it! Oh, my my soon-to-be 4-4 flyer just got stopped. Okay. Alright. We're running out. Ooh. Aha. Yes. Wood. Dump hand? No, wait. Hold hand. Hold hand. Yeah. I'm going to hold the swamp so that if we hit the wicked witch of the west, whatever, which is Mark, then I can discard that. This is whenever another creature you control dies. Okay. Do I off do I just trade both and then hold candy grapple and try to kill them with minstrosity or do I go for the damage? Yeah, time to get serious indeed, Flu Bob. All right, I'm going to go Gracious Vermin trades here. The 2-2. Two -two. I think maximizing the Vermin feels just wrong. I'm just going to go for it. Let them trade against the Vermin. And then we're basically like out of gas though. I don't know, this could have been a very poorly played. Three person grill, that sounds like one hell of a grill. Thanks for hanging out, Isaiah. Take care. I just didn't want them to trade both of the board, but... Oh wow, they played the recruiter out before hitting five? Under pressure. Pressure pushing down on me. Harry Bards can't die. Keep trading me. Wow. I did not expect them to not block Minstrosity there. Oh damn, do they got it? They go d double removal? Oh, they really wanted the young hero. Okay, well, they chose death for that. Interesting choice, Optic Draco. Turn one. 
Turn three. Removal. Win condition. Damn, we lost the die roll. All right, wish me luck. Here we go. All right, I like it. We got a turn two. Can't lose. Actually, hand is pretty fire. Sure. We might play that instead of Voracious Bourbon. And Golgari, and they went into the Moss. Oh, man. Okay, spicy. Spicy, spicy, spicy. Moss Dread Knight. Okay. Did they play the Dread Knight? Thank you, bad player. <laughs> I appreciate the support. Topia Sprawl. Okay, ramping. Random player. Bring in the heat. Ooh, they're going white. Abzan. Oh, Princess takes flight. Brutal. Okay. Yeah. I think this is more aggressive than Totentons. Alternatively, it does trigger celebration on its own for Grand Ball Guest. If we do end up drawing a land and going Candy Grapple, Grand Ball, it might have been better to have the Voracious Vermin. Man, this is tricky. Okay, so gain control target creature, untap that creature, it gains haste, create a wicked roll attached to a different creature. Hit them for a fair amount of damage with Twisted Fealty. I'd probably just trade this here, right? I think I like keeping the rats, because this can give death touch to this rat. Interesting. Death touch isn't really doing much for us, though, is it? You don't like the Twisted Fealty? Princess takes flight, it's gonna get rid of Totentons. Mmm, you would have sent the team. Ah. Uh, maybe I'm playing it too passively then. Yeah, well, Flubob's the true aggro player. Yeah, I probably should have attacked last turn. All right, well, everything's at 2 HP. Right, Wanton Timmy? Ten. This is 
so dumb. Give me a land. I should have done that last turn so, so badly. Because then those would have replaced 1-1 one, one rats, right? F. So I lost two 2-2s. Two yeah, Flu Bob, well, we know you're the ma you're the better magic player. This is known. Maybe they're stuck on three lands too, right? I mean, like, it looks like it. they've got four only because of Utopia Sprawl. Oh, no, it's definitely true. I can say it with 100% confidence, Blue Bob. Uh oh. They have five lands. Repeat, they have five lands. Maybe I should have waited for a Princess. I just assumed Princess wasn't coming back. Okay. Finally. I think we just kill them both. We just kill them both, right? I don't have lethal yet. Maybe they get a discard. They could play another hopeless and make me discard my final card. But if they do that, then Good game opponent. Damn it! Oh! <laughs> Good game opponent, as promised. Oh, into the Hamlet glutton. Oh, no! Oh, if I had played around the hopeless nightmare, would we have won? Feels bad, man. Hopeless. Okay, frick. Okay, so if I hadn't done Candy Grapple, Candy Grapple, if I'd just done one, we could have attacked last turn and let them trade. We still would have been okay, right? I mean, are they, are they just gonna slam another one? Are they just gonna go Hamlet Glutton, Hamlet Glutton? That's being troll. Well, they had the answer. We risked it. They had the answer. I'm going to get another 6-3. I don't think it came down to me not attacking that one turn where we would have gotten more 1-1 one, one value. I think it came down to me not playing around the hopeless nightmare. Did I play a land that turn? I didn't. Oh no, I did. I did. So that I could double spell. Oh, that one's going to haunt me, man. Because we're, we're just dead. Yeah, I think that Fealty's, after, I, this is the first time that I've run the Wicked Fealty, and it's good. It's great. It's really too bad they had the discard there. Good game, random player. Top quality final boss.